Hi guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. One of the most important questions for any Studio One user is how can I save, archive and convert my songs to share it with others or just to have a backup for myself? And the save options are already covered for you in a separate video, which I'm going to link to you in one of these top corners. I can never remember which one it is. Uh, but today we want to look at the convert options, which are particularly useful for archiving backup purposes. If you want to save a little bit of hard drive space and if you want to collaborate with people or send your mix to somebody to work on it and they don't use Studio One as their primary DAW. So let's take a look. So I have one of my song productions here uh, from a couple of years ago and um, I have a couple of virtual instrument tracks, as you can see, which are still in their original state. But most of it has already been transformed into audio tracks. And now the question is, how can I back up this production so that if I move on to a new system and I don't have all of these plugins that I used in the original production, and I'm still able to open it up? Because with all these new processes, like for example, Apple Silicon, uh, we should really consider how far we want to go with backward compatibility. Because at some point, staying behind the technological curve just to be able to run a couple of these ancient plugins that we use in two songs or so, it's just not sustainable. So we should really look at a couple of feasible ways to make these productions um, future-proof. So that's where the convert to options come in extremely handy. You're going to find these on the file and convert to. And here you see five options in total that I want to run through with you together. The first one, AEF, and the fourth one, OpenTL, they're fairly universal, meaning that they are being supported across many different DAWs, such as Pro Tools, Large A, Cubase, all of these support AAF, for instance. Um, it's essentially like a stem export, but it also remembers your event trimmings, it also remembers your event gains, and it even remembers pan and volume automations on your channels. So it gives you a better, more organized structure than a raw stem export that would just go from one marker or one loop range to the other. And um, yeah, it's particularly good when you're collaborating with other mix engineers and you want to save them a little bit of work. So let's take a look what happens as I'm pressing the AAF option. I first of all have to specify a location. So let's just go ahead and select my desktop here and hit save. And it asks me if I want to embed the audio directly inside of the AEF, which is an option that I really like, because then they get everything in just one file. Uh, I don't have to send a folder or anything like that. So I would usually advise to keep that ticked. You can also choose to split your stereo tracks if you want to, and uh, also to convert the audio files if need be. Trim audio files means should they basically discard all the unused regions in audio files or if they should leave a little bit of tolerance, which you can specify here. If you have export pan tick, then the pan automation of your channels is also going to be considered not just the volume automation. And you can also take the legacy mode, but these days it's probably not necessary anymore. Then hit OK. And now I get this warning here for a couple of my tracks that there's a couple of unrendered event effects. So event effects are not really compatible in other DAWs, so we have to render these to audio first to make sure that everything is compatible. So let's go ahead and locate the Bells A and Impacts tracks. So this one right here and this one. And uh, just going to cancel the export and select the Bells, right click. Probably the fastest way to deal with this is to just transform to rendered audio. You can see I have a couple of event effects applied here and then they would be rendered in. So let's do that right now. Right click, transform to rendered audio. Specify if you want to leave an auto tail. This is probably important because when you render such delays, they don't end at the event boundary. Usually they carry on for a bit longer. So then it's important to allow an auto tail. Usually five seconds of release is enough. If you preserve the real time state, then you can always go back to the pre-rendered version, but this would of course only be relevant as long as you're staying within Studio One. So with that ticked, let's hit OK. And now these two event effects are being transformed. Now the delay that I used to have on these is rendered in. And uh, the only other one I have to take care of was this impacts track. And that is because I used ghost copies here so that if I would adjust something like the gain 
this would happen on all of the copies at the same time, which is very useful. But this is something that not every DAW can do. So we have to bounce this, just select, hit Command and B for bouncing. Once again, you could also transform, but bounce is probably even faster. And once that's done, also gonna do it for these parts here, the AEF export should work without any issues. We have to keep in mind though, that when we trigger this AEF export, this is really just considering the audio tracks of our song. Now, however, I also have a couple of virtual instruments still, as you can see. So those have to be rendered into audio first before I can really trigger the AEF export with the safe knowledge that everything is being considered. And to do that, I'm just gonna go in the track list here and down here, you can just disengage everything except the instrument tracks. Very, very useful if you weren't aware of this yet. And then I could just select them by holding down Shift and Command for single ones on a Mac or a Control on a Windows PC. So this is also how you could make a multi-selection that's not adjacent. So if I want to have Choir selected, Snare and Kick, just hold down Control on Windows, Command on Mac. If you use Shift, then it's like top to bottom selection. It's just a side note, good to know. And then right click and transform to audio track. Here you see very similar options. Render all channels is very important, particularly for instruments that use multiple outputs. So if you're using Impact or Superior Drummer and you have composed your drums perhaps in one track, but you're still using multiple channels to mix your overheads, your kick, your snare separately, then you might want to tick this box because then you also get separate channels for each of these. Um, you can also render the inserts in. This is something that we probably want to do, even though this would already happen uh, with the AF export anyway. And you can also preserve the instrument track state that you can always go back to the instrument tracks. But once again, that would only work as long as you're still in the Studio One song file. Then the auto tail is exactly what we talked about. Uh, if you have sounds that carry on for longer than the event boundary, leave this ticked, hit OK. And once that's done, we are ready to do an AEF export. Now the AEF export is of course only the best option if you're not staying within Studio One. If you're staying within Studio One, you should use either save to new folder or convert to zip file, which is pretty much the same thing, but saves even more hard drive space. And you can upload that directly to your cloud storage on Personosphere, for instance. But we're gonna take a look at that in just a moment. First, let's go back to a session that's now completely transformed into audio tracks and try once again with the AEF export. So go to file, convert to AEF file. And once again, specify a location. I'm gonna go for the desktop once more, replace the one that I originally attempted to export. And this time we should be all good to go. So hit okay. And you can see it starts rendering, uh, it just runs through. And this is gonna be done in just a second. And now let's go on the start page for testing purposes, open up the desktop here and just drag and drop the AAF file directly onto Studio on start page. And as you can see, all of the audio tracks have been imported. All of the trimmings here of the events have been remembered, even, you know, these fade outs and event gains, because these are universally understood across the AWS, have been exported, but not destructively. So a mix engineer working on this would still have total control over these waveforms. And this is usually a very good way to collaborate with somebody who's using a different DAW than you. The disadvantage is that track colors and so forth are not being remembered, but that's actually the case when you go for file, convert to, and then capture session. Now a capture session does remember the colors and everything, which is really nice. And this is especially great if you have a Studio Live mixer, because then you can use this exported file, put that on an SD card, and then use the virtual sound check feature to just stream this mix across the entire mixing console and then you could use that for sound check of a band that's not even arrived yet. Um, an absolutely groundbreaking feature in my opinion, uh, especially once touring gets a bit more popular. And I'm gonna link you to a video of my good friend and colleague Ray Tansen who's shown that in a bit more detail once again in the top corner here.
Okay, so before we move on to the option that I really want to talk about, which is the zip file option, let's just quickly cover OpenTL. That's very similar to AAF, but instead of rendering all of the audio files directly into the AAF, this is essentially just a text file that lets the other DAW know where the events are positioned. And all of that information that's part of the AAF is like in a text file there. Um, you still have to of course, include the original audio files. So it's not quite as convenient for sending. But on the other hand, you don't duplicate any audio files by uh, going for this option. So it can be a feasible option if you're working with somebody outside of your own DAW and you want to save some hard drive space by not duplicating your media files on your own hard drive. Then there's also, of course, the convert to MIDI file option. Uh, as you probably guessed, this would just consider the instrument tracks in your song and all of the instrument MIDI data on these tracks would be rendered into a separate file along with the song BPM information. Sometimes I, uh, especially when I collaborate with other producers, would also include a MIDI file along with an AEF export so that if they hear a certain instrument where they'd like to change the chord progression or something like that, which is very hard to do if it's already an audio file and you're not using Studio One, then um, it's great to also have a MIDI file to accompany that. So that would cover the MIDI file option. But now onto the zip file. The zip file is very similar to save to new folder, which is the option you should always use when in doubt to save your Studio One song, because this will make sure that all of the reference media files are packed into one folder. But the zip file also packs this into a flag and then compresses everything. So if you have wave files with a lot of uh, pauses and silence in between, this makes for considerably smaller file sizes. And also you get the option to directly and conveniently upload that to your Personosphere cloud workspace you get up to 100 gigabytes of cloud storage with Personosphere. And yeah, using that as the archive space for all of your done song productions is just perfect. So just click on convert to zip file. And once you have that done, just choose the location, click save. And now you see the audio file compression option flag, which is lossless, but makes for much smaller file sizes and the upload to Personosphere option. You also get a list of plugins that you used in your production so that you can make sure that these are still available on other computers. And yeah, if you don't have any of these anymore in the foreseeable future, definitely consider first transforming these tracks before you convert them into a zip file. But then just hit OK. And this will give you a Studio One song file with all the referenced audio files that looks exactly like it did when you saved the production. So all of your virtual instruments are still accessible. There's no need to render in your event effects like we had to with the AEF export. It's so much more flexible when you stay within the same ecosystem and there's always the total recall. So to summarize, if you're staying inside of Studio One, then I think that Save to New Folder or its memory saving companion convert to zip file are the best options to go with. Um, of course, if you want to use virtual soundcheck on your studio live, then converting to capture session is yet another very exciting option. But all the other ones are really more relevant when you're collaborating with people outside of your own DAW environment. And it's just good to know about them. As always, thank you so much for your attention and see you next time.